Hello, everybody. Uh, I am uh, Nikolai Berbeja. Sounds weird pronounced in English. I'm a game developer from um, Romania, and I'm also the founder of those awesome guys. I used to have long hair. So uh, I've worked on many games. I've um, been part of many game jams. I've been making games for about five years now. I made a lot of um, browser games. And uh, for the past two years now, I've been working on my most ambitious project yet, called Move or Die. Now, Move or Die is this fun little party game uh, where you play with 300 friends and you go against each other in various um, game modes. And it's based around the idea that if you stand still, your life drains and you'll explode. So you have to constantly move in order to stay alive. And uh, it's a great game to lose friends to. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not only mentioning this because uh, I've released it in early access like a week ago, but also because I'm going to use it as an example for um, what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to talk about game view. Uh, now, it's a, tr a tricky topic because game feel is not one thing. It's a sum of many other things. So some of the most important things that make up game feel, in my opinion, are um, visual cues, the things that you see on screen, audio, the things that you hear coming out from the game, haptic feedback of like the controller vibrating and stuff like that, and responsiveness, how fast something happens uh, once you input a command. Now, I'm going to talk about a bit uh, feedback. I'm sure most of you know what feedback is, but I'm not talking about the kind of feedback that you get from a person. I'm talking about the kind of feedback that you feel when you press a button on a controller. I think we can all agree that uh, like using a physical controller is quite satisfying, at least much more satisfying than using a touch screen. Just swiping your finger on a piece of glass is not really, I don't know, satisfying. So. Um, the thing about game feel is that it's basically feel with game appended to it. So it also applies to other forms of media like uh, mobile devices as well. Have you ever noticed when you use your um, keypad that when you press a button, the letter shows up above your finger and also the phone vibrates slightly, optionally, and it also makes a sound effect? All these little things make a much more better experience and um, not only that they make the act of typing out an email or an SMS uh, way more satisfying, it's also functional because, for example, you no longer have to offset your uh, vision from the keypad to the actual message to check if your input registered. You already know it did because you heard that sound effect or you felt the phone vibrating. Now, I'm going to give, uh, show a few examples of a uh, game feel from um, some games I found. Now this first one is from an online game. I think it's a free game, a shooter. I don't really know the name of, but uh, it's an example of what not to do. So, yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry about the music there. Um, I don't even know what happened. Uh, this this is an example of kind of lack of feedback. Uh, you saw how uh, when he shot the gun, there wasn't really a, a muzzle flash. There was only like a smoke puff that stayed there for a few frames. And also the sound effect was quite weak. And you didn't really felt like you were shooting a weapon. You felt like you were shooting a plastic gun. Uh, not to mention that he has 24 rounds in a pump action shotgun and how the enemy died. This is an example of a good feedback. Now, that was from a game called Bulletstorm, which I'm sure most of you know. And what that guy did there was uh, shooting a flail gun at his enemies. Now, a flail gun is a gun that shoots two bombs chained together that trap around your enemy and you can remotely detonate them. That alone is satisfying enough, but on top of that, the way they um, executed the idea was very um, high quality, how you can see the particles and the sound effects and seeing the enemies guts fly all, all over the screen is really fun. Here is another example because uh, the other guy before me was talking about Skyrim. This is me swinging my sword at the wall in Skyrim and uh, we can see how it reacts. 
as in it doesn't react at all. My sword goes right through it. And this is really important when it comes to uh, game feel because when you want to be immersed in a game and like you want to fight a bear on a mountain, you want to feel like you're fighting a bear on a mountain, not slicing cheese. So uh, on the other hand, this is chivalry, and this is what happens when you try to swing your sword at a wall. It's much more realistic, and it feels better. You get feedback from your actions. Um, so with all these in mind, the conclusion is that game feel is the type of thing that makes you say, this feels really awesome, but I'm not sure why. It's the thing that not many people noticed when it is there, but everybody notices when it's not there. It's really obvious. So I am going to go through uh, the death, death animation in Move or Die. I'm going to go through each development step uh, that I went through to make it happen, and I'm going to do this without requiring any hand draw frames of explosions or anything artsy like that. I'm just going to use um, asset manipulation and code and stuff like that. So without uh, before um, starting, I just want to mention that the game is coded in Lua. It uses uh, the Love2D framework and Box2D as the um, physics engine. So without further ado, let's make an awesome death animation. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to assume we have uh, nothing. So first of all, I'm going to need movement and a death condition. So uh, this is some basic uh, movement code. I'm not really here to talk about code. Everybody can find these tutorials and whatever. This is just some basic movement. Um, and then we add some jumping. This is, luckily for us, uh, Box2D takes care of uh, the gravity and all that. So we only apply forces on the uh, player. And for the death condition, in for the sake of this presentation, I'm going to say that when player 1's feet touch player 2's head, then player 2 explodes. So I'm going to try to do something a bit stupid. Um, I'd push, I could show you this using images or videos. But we're talking about games, so I'm going to attempt to have you guys play the game as I talk about it. So I'm going to need two people from the audience who are willing to help me make this work by playing the game. So who's interested? So uh, make sure it's turned on. You know how to use an Xbox controller. <laughs> OK, um, what I'm going to need you two guys to do is, whenever the game is on screen, run at each other and jump on each other's head. What I'm going to need everybody else to do is give them a round of applause every time they do so to show our appreciation for them helping me make th this thing happen. So let's see if this works. Awesome, it works. <laughs> cool. Now, it's awesome that this works. However, <laughs> woo! <laughs> now, come on, one more time. There we go, woo! Now, this is fun and all, but um, it's not good enough. I mean, player instantly disappears, and it's not really satisfying to play or look at, even though you guys clap. Um, so the first things first, let's add some animations. Now, um, what we need to do in order to add animation is create them first, decide between sprite sheets or any other methods that I'm going to talk about, uh, exporting, packing, and implementing. Now, the first thing I do um, when uh, it comes to animation is break apart my character. So I take my character and I break it apart in um, many pieces. I take each individual piece and export it as an image. And then I animate it. I do all my animations in um, Adobe Flash. And here we have like um, four or five animations, a simple run, jump, and death. And then we have to uh, put these in the game. Now, most people use sprite sheets. And this is how a sprite sheet looks. And just in case somebody here doesn't know what the spreadsheet is, is the, every frame of the animation exported as an image and packed into a bigger image. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this because it takes a lot of space and it's not really flexible. And in this specific case, it doesn't really work because I like to work with quite big assets that look good in uh, big resolutions. So 
this would absolutely kill the memory. So what I do instead is I use something I call asset sheets. I'm not sure if they have an official name, but what I do is uh, instead of exporting every frame, I export every piece of my character, and then uh, I export the animation separately as a text file, a JSON file. So what this does is exports uh, all the information for every piece of my character for every animation. So this is an example. Uh, come on, work. There we go. Um, sorry. OK, so this says that, for example, uh, the right leg at frame 13, it has this x and y values, this uh, scale x and scale y, rotation, alpha, and so on. Now, the beauty of this is that it's very flexible, and I can uh, remove or add any variables I want. And for comparison, this is how the sprite sheet would look like for those uh, five or six animations. It would be uh, 5,700 by 3,100 pixels, which is quite a lot for like only five animations. And this is how my asset sheet would look like, which is 460 by 210, less than 1% of the number of pixels. Um, now. Why the reason I use this is that, again, it's a small file. It doesn't take uh, as much memory, um, and it's also very flexible. For example, if I wanted a second character that just has a bigger right leg, I would with sprite sheets I would have to export a separate sprite sheet with that small change and take up double the amount of memory and the uh, processing power. But with asset sheets, I could just uh, multiply the scale of his right leg and have that uh, work in runtime have to go through that whole process. Uh, again, yeah, you have uh, individual control over many variables. And my favorite thing, you can do interpolation. Now, I'm a big fan of slow motion. I don't know about you, but um, when you do slow motion with sprite sheets, basically every frame lasts longer, and you get this choppy look that is not really smooth. But with asset sheets, because you have the data for each frame, you can create that data, data where there is none. So you can interpolate between frames and have really smooth and awesome looking slow motion. We should play any time now. There we go. Cool. So it's really awesome to be able to do stuff like this. You'll see it later on in the presentation. Um, the next thing is simple. Implementation. Uh, again, this is uh, very basic. We just apply the animations. And let's see how the demo looks again. Um, here we go. Awesome, we have a, who's the blue, play, blue player? You're the blue one. There we go, right off the bat, it looks much better. Woo! You got this, come on. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> awesome, except it's not awesome. Because we only have animations. Again, this is a small step, but there's much more that we could do. So let's move on. Let's add sound effects. So I'm going to add some sound effects for movement and for the death animation, uh, also for the environment. Uh, there are many places where you could uh, find sound effects. These are just some of them uh, that I use. Um, some of them are free. Some of them um, cost a bit of money. And uh, there are great uh, places to find whatever weird sound effects you're into. And uh, I use Audacity to edit my sound effects. I'm not paid by them or anything, but this is really awesome, um, small little program that does its job. So a few tips for um, movement sound effects. They have to be subtle, because you don't want your player to pay attention to the footsteps instead of the conversation. And uh, there has to be a lot of variation, because uh, I'm pretty sure you all played a game where there were only like two footstep sounds, and they get really annoying really quickly. So uh, let's start with a simple jump sound effect. Uh, this is how it sounds like. So far so good, but it's a bit too loud, so I'm going to tone that down a bit. So this is what I mean by uh, being subtle. And I also need a lot of variation, because there's a lot of jumping, and this would be like really tiresome quickly. So, um, I'm going to use a little trick to add variation. I'm going to slightly change the pitch of the sound every time it plays. So just like that, I create variation. There we go. Without any having, a, without having to use uh, multiple sound effects or like, like my head against multiple files. 
is just a small bit. Um, then the footsteps. Now, I don't have footsteps in Wolf or Die because there are four characters, they're really small, and they run really fast. So adding footsteps would be suicide. Uh, but again, they have to be very subtle, and there has to be a lot of variation. Now for the death sound effect. Uh, I'm going to compose multiple sounds to get the awesome results. Uh, it has to be very satisfying, and let's start with a strong impact. Okay, it's quite a bit of a delay. Uh, I'm going to add a small impact to overlap with a strong one. So far, so good. And then for the end, I'm going to need a really satisfying squishy sound. Okay, it doesn't make much sense now, but you'll see later. So I'm going to combine all of these to create this that sound effect. Nice. Um, also, let's not forget about the environment. Uh, it's really important. You notice the, there was those little tiles that disappear when you touch them, and this is the sound they make. It's really simple. It's really small. Uh, short, sorry. And uh, this also has that whole uh, pitch shift. You have to make it um, uh, to add variation. And it's really important to have sound effects for your environment because, like, when you play a game and let's say you knock over a chair, you want to hear that chair make a sound effect when it hits the floor. Otherwise, it doesn't have weight to it. So it really creates a more immersive environment. So let's check out the demo again with sound effects. Woo! Nice. <laughs> no fun allowed. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. It's not good enough. <laughs> we have to add something else to make it even more satisfying. So what I want to add next is I want to add something I call death wait. So I want a way to reward your actions for being arch nemesis. Uh, I want a, a way to mark the spot where you died in, and I also want a way to tell who died and when without using any like UI elements and things you have to learn. So I found uh, some splatter uh, brushes online, and I just changed their car color to match the player color. So um, I'm going to spawn them whenever a player dies. I'm going to make sure that they match the player color. And I'm going to add a randomization by uh, rotating it, uh, scaling it randomly, and all that. I'm also going to lower its opacity to filter um, to blend in better with the background. So this is how they look like. Complete shit. <laughs> they look horrible because they're over everything. They don't feel like they're in that actual level. So what I'm going to do is take advantage of depth and render them under everything except the background. And uh, right off the bat, it looks better but still not quite there yet. So I want a way to show them on the foreground as well. So I'm going to create um, an alpha mask. So I'm rendering all the tiles, uh, tint them white, and render them over a black background. And I'm going to use that as an alpha mask for my um, paint splatters, which I'm going to render another uh, layer of. So wait, I just see this. There we go. I'm going to apply the mask to them, and I'm going to set their blending mode to additive. And that's going to give us this result, which looks much better if it's a new place. And um, it's really awesome to see the paint being on the floor and going like, yeah, I killed that guy, and that's the mark he left. But before the demo, I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add particles because particles are awesome. So uh, I'm going to spawn a random number of particles. I am going to make them fly outwards of um, each player when they die. And I'm going to make each particle leave, uh, leave a small splatter on the floor or anything it touches. So this is what they're going to look like. And it feels like you're actually making a difference, like you're leaving, you're, uh, yeah, leaving a, a change there. So let's see how they look in the game. Uh, there we go. Make a mess. Yes! Awesome! Cool! <laughs> now these are only two players, so imagine how it gets with four players, and you basically get to paint the entire level. 
I should feel bad because the guy before me talked about blood splatters and all that. Getting frost too far. But yeah, awesome. Except it's not good enough. <laughs> we're we're gonna add some final touches. Now um, I'm going to go quite fast through these ones. I'm going to add a screen shake, chromatic aberration, a shockwave, and haptic feedback. Now, um, we're going to add screen shake. Uh, we just changed the camera's uh, coordinates every frame. And this is how it looks like, which is a bit too much. So I'm going to tone that down a little bit. And it should look like this, much better. And it gives you a sense of making things happen when you kill somebody. Next, I'm going to add chromatic aberration. And um, sorry, for those who don't know, Chromatic aberration is when you split the color channels and you offset uh, offset them. So what I'm going to do here is offset the red and blue channels. And it gives this funky little effect, which is a bit exaggerated uh, for the sake of presentation. And uh, these two effects combined uh, are really awesome. They're not only eye candy, they're also functional, because it tells you if somebody died somewhere else on the screen without you having to look there. You already know somebody died because you felt the screen shake and you saw the chromatic aberration, even though you were looking completely in a completely different um, direction. Next, I'm going to add uh, an awesome thing, which I call a shockwave, which is basically um, a blue, uh, sorry, a white circle uh, scaling up, rendered on a black background. And I'm going to apply this as a displacement map. So whenever you die, something like this will happen, which looks really awesome. And uh, finally, I'm going to add haptic feedback. Uh, these slides are really slow. There we go. Um, you won't be able to tell uh, the haptic feedback, but you can ask the guys playing, and they'll confirm it. Um, so the controller will vibrate a bit every time, uh, every time you die. So let's see how all these play in the demo. Um, there we go. Nice. It's already lagging because I'm recording the screen. Oh. Maybe we'll have a bit of time to try with try it with four players later on. So awesome. Except that um, I'm going to pause the music for a second. I want to end it on a high note, so I'm going to try something. Uh, if you'll stop for a second and stop killing each other. Cool. OK, so what I need you to do is run in uh, opposite corners and stay like at the far right and far left. Yellow, go, go to the left. No, the other. There we go. Cool. So um, I'm going to do a countdown. And when I say go, you'll run at each other and jump on each other's head. What I'm going to need everybody else to do is do those ooh type of things. So I'm going to make this a bit more epic. I hope it's going to run OK. So you ready? Three, two, one, go. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh, no, 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 don't run, don't run. Let him kill you, let him kill you for the sake of the presentation. <laughs> Woo! Nice! <laughs> Woo! Thank you. This is good enough for now. <laughs> there are a lot of things um, that you might have missed uh, that I haven't really mentioned. Um, there are a lot of small things that make uh, quite a huge difference, like uh, the props in the level. Have you noticed how there are like metal things, things on the ground that you can kick around? That gives a much more uh, better feel of um, space and how you uh, affect the environment. Landing dust, how you create a little puff of dust whenever you land, and how the characters look at each other all the time. And uh, in this last part, you probably noticed the yellow guy's look, which was quite evil. Um, also, in the score screen, like when the score is displayed, they give each other mean looks if they're, if they're tied. 
So it's really fun to play with these little things. And also, uh, all the background elements uh, were pulsating on the rhythm of the music, which uh, gives this nice rhythm to the gameplay and makes things feel much more better. Um, for anybody who wants to uh, contact me and keep this conversation going, you can find me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Steam as Celebes. You have them there, or whoever is still using email. Uh, and um, you can find the game on uh, Steam if you look up um, or die. And uh, let's keep this conversation going. I love talking about games and about anything uh, related to design and development. So uh, yeah, I'll be around here after this talk. So let's make this community better. Um, thank you again for having me. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, I think we have time for Q&A. Actually, let's try to play the game during questions to see if this works. Let's see. One second. Time now. There we go. So, this is another controller, and I have one that doesn't uh, isn't wireless. So, somebody from the front row. I hope the game won't crash during this. It's going to lag a bit because I'm recording my screen. So, sorry about that. It's going to be the toasty. Oh. <laughs> cool. So, there we go. Crash. Explode. Oh, God, I'm going to stop the recording because this is horrible. Be a bit better. Anyway, questions. If you're not too distracted, somebody there. How many iterations that were necessary to this game? Um, many. Right. The, the, there's a long story. It started off. At, what, what are you guys doing? One second. Sorry. Um, there, uh, it started off as a single-player uh, narration-based puzzle platformer uh, called Concerned Joe. So I worked on that for quite a bit. Um, again, uh, making our own engine and all that, like not really knowing where the game goes. So that took a long while because we didn't have like a clear goal. So we uh, we went to GDC to showcase the single-player game, and that was all fine and dandy. But then one night I was like, what if I add three more players? So I added three more players, showed it at a local convention, and people were having so much fun that I decided uh, we should completely change the direction of the game. And uh, it just uh, basically snowballed from there on. <laughs> so yeah, we, I'm working on this for two years now or so, and I'm hoping to finish it this year and keeping it updated with content. Any other questions? God, this lags horribly. My laptop sucks. <laughs> um, a lot of early access games lately have been getting crap for uh, being essentially a paid Q&A. How's your experience with Steam early access been so far? Exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do a pretty uncommon thing with early access because uh, I release it at a higher price than it will be on a final release because um, there are a lot of people who just snatch the game if it's uh, on a discount in early access just for the sake of having it and then don't play it at all and just keep it in their library until it comes out. And that doesn't help me as a developer at all. So what I'm looking for is people that actually want to get involved in the development process. 
it's really hard to answer questions when everybody is playing. So yeah, um, yeah, people are still complaining that I'm doing QA for you and uh, you're even asking for more money. But I'm trying to keep the community very small with dedicated people instead of having a huge one with people that are not willing to help the game. Better. Just, just keep it going. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, hi. Uh, I don't actually have a question. I would just like to tell you that this is by far the most inspiring talk. Woo! Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah. This is. Uh, it's the first one really oriented towards the, the meaning of games, in my opinion, and it's called fun and entertainment. Thank you. And I think that. With this one, you, you nailed the point that I've been searching for the whole conference since yesterday, and that's somebody who actually pays attention to the content and uh, the way it actually makes you feel about it. Yeah, this feeling. Uh, mainly, we had uh, uh, people who are concerned about coding, and the whole conference is kind of a business-wise yeah, yeah. oriented, <laughs> etc. But this, I mean, I can only say. Bravo. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Anybody else? There's a lunch break after this. We have them to play. Hi. Hi. Hello. So, uh, so first, thanks for a really great talk. Uh, it's really good to have uh, such a nice list of all the great bits of feedback people put in. Um, I do actually give talks about this kind of topic myself and my students, uh, and I fully encourage them to do all the things you're saying. Uh, so thank you for making a great list that they can all use. Uh, one of the questions I always get from them, which I always have trouble with myself, is what do you consider too much feedback? At what point do you go, wow, I've gone too far now? Um, does it ever happen? Pro yeah, probably the point where um, the action on the screen isn't clear anymore because of all the particles and splatters and like effects and all that. So there's a limit, like you should know when to stop. But um, it's quite hard to reach that uh, level. I mean, it depends on the um, uh, the way you're going. But yeah, I don't really have a, a clear answer either. But you just have to be really subtle with your effects and not overdo them. Like, have you noticed, like, the um, chromatic aberration and the shockwave and all that were really exaggerated when I talked, to, uh, talked about them. But right now in the game, they're much more subtle. And, uh, oh, it's really nice to <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to hear somebody from your position saying thanks for my stuff. That's really great. Thank you for your answer. <laughs> OK, thanks. How's the score going? Who's winning? I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. Purple should win, or pinkish, because it's the color of the conference. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, no. <laughs> so wait, if, wait, purple is leading. So if purple wins this round, he's the ultimate winner. Come on, pur who's purple? Come on. <laughs> You pass it around. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Like, pass the controller around whenever you die. Nobody can finish this level. I, I can bet money that nobody will finish it this earlier. It's really tricky. Like, people hate me for this level. Go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, at least somebody wins so we can end this nicely. are doing on time, by the way. Five off. <laughs> Come on, purple. No! Purple, you're disappointing me. You find out you get really creative with the swear words yelling at the TV while you play this. No! <laughs> okay, come on, blue. You're the second one. Oh! No! So close. <laughs> oh. 
this is fun. This is good testing. This is feedback. <laughs> Get the ones on the ceiling and on the walls. Green is making a comeback. I hate this mod. Okay. And no. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh. Yes. Nice. Thank you again.